Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Pius X Church for the Eucharistic celebration of the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join me in praying the stewardship prayer, the orange prayer in your pews. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, my parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It will be friendly if I am. Its fuse will be filled if I help fill them. We will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring other people into the worship and fellowship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and love, and a parish with a noble spirit. If I who make it what it is, I am filled with these great things. Therefore, with your help, O oh God, I shall dedicate myself to go in our faith by being all things that I want my parish to be. Please turn off all cell phones if you had not already done so. And now please stand and greet your neighbor. <clears throat> Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins and ask God mercy and forgiveness so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. Jesus, you bring 
light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of goodwill, to the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. For you, we, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, the heavenly King, God Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and to all peace, to people of the world, to people of Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. God in the highest, and to love peace, to people of goodwill, to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit. The glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest. And to love peace to people of goodwill. To people of goodwill. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity so that unhindered, in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, what do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, you accursed fiend, you are depriving us of, our, of this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his suffering as nothing. After he had died, 
they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, it is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God, giving, God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may our love Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified, as it did among you, and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident, confident of you in the Lord that what we instruct you you are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. <laughs> Glory to you, Lord. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, and the first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and likewise all sev the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry. But those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and he is not God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord. Your sins be wiped away. Well, how many of you believe in the resurrection of Christ? How many of you believe in the eternal life of Christ? That's a good starting point, thank you. We all know about the reality of uh, death, right? This month, of course, November, we think a lot about death and all the other end realities. People in this world, I think, there can be different ways of understanding death and what's after. One approach is, death is a dead end. It's like you enter into a tunnel and there is nothing on the other side. And that can lead us, the people, to think into a philosophy called hedonism. Hope you'll know that, right? You eat, you drink, and that's it. Because tomorrow you're going to die anyway. It's a dead end. There is nothing on the other side. That's one approach. Now, the other approach can be based on our human imagination or human balance. Not the balance, but you know. What is that all about? Okay, let's put it this way. Death is like you slip from this house to an exotic resort in Caribbeans. Yeah. From your house, you are slipping into that beautiful place in the Caribbeans or uh, Bahamas, wherever that is, okay. It's all about everything wonderful there. And you expect to get everything, the opposite of everything that you did not like here. You expect to get the opposite of whatever you did not like here, there. And many of us use our imagination and that's how we create our own heavens. 
And every individual, I'm sure, has his own heaven, expectation of heaven on the other side. But now we come to know what actually Jesus speaks about heaven, or what is heaven according to the scripture. This heaven is based upon the hope and vision, and the foundation is two things. Number one, the promise of Christ. Number two, the logic of Christ. Keep those two things in mind. We have the promise of Christ and the logic of Christ, not our human logic. Logic of Christ. I'll come to that. The basis is life is eternal. Do you agree with it? Life is not eternal. Life is eternal. God is eternal. God is life. And we share God's life. And therefore life is eternal. It's pure logic, okay? Love is immortal. Do you agree with it? Love is immortal. God is love. God is immortal. Therefore love is immortal. Again, pure logic. Okay. I told you don't depend upon our logic, but I'm just using the same thing. Now in that pattern, we come to understand what death is. Death is the horizon. Okay. Is horizon the limit of sky or earth? Is the horizon the limit of sky or earth? It's a question. Okay. If you are on the sea level, imagine that you are somewhere in the Florida and beach. Good to be there now, right? Okay. And how far can you see? To the horizon. How far is the horizon? Thank you. Some 50 miles? Some 20 miles? Some 10 miles? Some 5 miles? It all depends how tall you are, okay? Yeah. Yeah. It's all how tall you are. So let's put it this way. A six foot man, a person, not man, a person, for his horizon is going to be 3.1 miles. So horizon is not the limit of the sky or limit of the earth. It's limit of your sight. So death is basically the limit of my sight. That's not the end of anything. That's what I see. So Maccabees, the first book actually, they were able to see beyond that horizon. They were able to believe and understand that life is eternal and love is eternal. And when we think about death or resurrection or eternal life, there are two things that we have to keep in mind. We said eternal life. Do you know when is the starting point of your eternal life? The starting moment of your eternal life. The moment of your death, right? The moment of your death, right? No. It's the moment of your, that conception in your mother's womb. From that moment, you begin your journey into eternity. Your soul goes like, okay. But when is the moment of your resurrection? When is the moment of your resurrection? That's, that's a different thing. We talk about your soul. It started from the moment of conception, goes all the way for eternity. When is the moment of your resurrection? You said in the beginning you believe in his resurrection, right? Okay. Do you believe in, in your own resurrection? 
do you believe in your own resurrection yes. wonderful do you think when that's going to happen if you know please let me know <laughs> yeah if you know that please i have no idea that's why we do not know that no one knows that it's going to be at the second coming of christ but those two things are to be put together the resurrection of our bodies and of course the soul that goes all the way to eternity but again the life in heaven the way we understand is not going to be just a slip into something else it's all about a transformation the body it's buried and it's decayed right it's going to be risen the total transformation the new world the new heaven everything is going to be recreated renewed transformed in his second coming and what is at the end heaven it's not a resort in somewhere heaven is actually you realize that god is love and god loves you totally and you love him fully and totally and because there is a complete communion of love you forget about time that's eternity they say if you can get the the uh, spirit of light yeah you don't realize time basically but it's not that i'm not speaking that part anyway don't worry about it you realize you are fully loved by god totally and you love god fully and totally and then time is lost that's heaven that's eternity Let's proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot and not made, can substance with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified and upon his pilot he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins to look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come amen we thank our mighty god for our life and blessings and we ask him to give us the grace so that we may continue to trust in jesus christ for the pope and his role as shepherd of the church may god's wisdom guide and strengthen him in his leadership let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for the light of christ to reach all hearts and for the salvation of the world let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for all who are burdened by persecution of any kind May the Lord rescue them from harm and bring forth justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community as we continue to grow in Christ, may God help us focus on what is most important in fulfilling his mission as his disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the continued generosity of our community may assist those who are most in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Recognizing the many blessings God has bestowed upon us, may we embrace the spirituality of stewardship and avoid any sense of entitlement in our relationship with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rest in the perfect peace of God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the souls of Vernon and Penny Ross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the Lord in His name, for our good and all of His holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty of salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with the divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of a downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord, through him. The host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountiful holiness. Make holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink In this, this cup, we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that your will is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine issue, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and the glory of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by the sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening. For you that don't know me, I'm Bob Ross. I'm one of 15 members of the 150 year Book of Remembering. And uh, we thought there needed to be an update. And some certain person also thinks we need to do more marketing. Now, that may be, but whatever. Wanted to. <laughs> the books, as you know, came in in late August. We immediately started prepare for selling of the books. I also don't want to pass up the National Junior Honor Society at St. Pius. Those kids helped unload 1,050 books. They helped stack them and store them. And they deserve your kind thoughts and prayers. So far, we've sold about 221 books. We've got about 30 books that have been given to priests, nuns, convents, monasteries, and we have some more to go out. After Mass, there will be people in the back of church that can sell more books. There's 288 pages in this book. It's full of color, it's full of stories, family stories and pictures information from 1870 until 2020 and in a couple of places a little past it due to the slow production of the book. All the parishes have sections in there. St. John's, the Baptist, which was considered the Irish church, Immaculate Conception, which is considered the German church, and St. Pius X, which is now the Unified Parishes. Also, St. Mary's of Higby, which was a mission, is in there. There's school stories from Loretta Academy, from St. Mary's Mission, church school for girls, boys later, and from the IC school, and the St. Pius X school. There's more stories and information. It, it is a book that is really in my opinion, good. Not because I had anything to do with it, but it is good from the stories that people wrote of their own families. It'd make good Christmas presents, good gifts to people that from, from the parish that have moved away that you think might need a book. We do have capabilities to mail the book. I encourage you to buy the book. There is one item that I have to cover uh, that you do something and you always have some kind of a problem. Well, don't want to lead you to believe that we were perfect. Lord knows we wouldn't think that, would we? We found some mistakes in the book. We have one page that goes with the book. Anybody that has purchased a book, if they're here, will give you one of these pages. If you bought 10 books, you'll get 10 pages. If you bought one book, you'll get one page. Um, we will mail the book pages to the people that we mail the books to. If you have questions, you can call the parish office. If you need to buy a book, you can call and get them from Sarah. You can get them from Tina over at the school. And we're going to have a few more sales before the end of the year also, after Masses. I appreciate the time to speak to you. Thank you, Father, for allowing it. Thank you, Bob and team, for making a wonderful job of preparing the whole uh, the book. It's a lot of work. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> the uh, Veterans Day Assembly at St. Pius X School this Friday, November 11th, and the book What Among Us is available in the back of the church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and
announce the gospel of the Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>